Hello, I'm Robert Potter and I produce this film. It's about the 2022 reunion of former Peace Corps volunteers in Niger, West Africa from the 1960s. So I think you'll enjoy this. I'll just be documenting things okay. on and off all day. Well, I'll stand pick. up and hold the ice pick toward him. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you live now? Florida. 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 Yeah. Florida. Florida. And Buck has a picture Florida. he's going to show me. There it is. Oh, the chair. Yes. <laughs> I told Michael yeah. that it's fixed. Video, you know, this whole thing. Oh, Why not? Why not? Why not? Hello, Dad. Gatekeeper. Yeah, that's what you are. Come on, guys. Yeah. All right. That's your title page. Oh, yeah. That's the title page. Wow. Shall I get a picture? So, anyway, so what you end up is um, you saw uh, what was the you have you know, all your nutrients, the and there's another um, the, on the, the son of it. I told you. What's that? Founder for like a little bit. There was a one eight hundred boo hoo. <laughs> he found ways to control insects using of all things. He makes his own soap, what we call in industry, we call it spreader sticker, so surfactants. Like yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. This is Buck McAdoo. Oh, yeah. No, no, Possum McAdoo, sorry. The possum, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. They had to fly these nukes and then they would pick 
catch up at 45 degrees and let it go and it uh, voila, it's self-served. And it, I think it's been, uh, What's the first reunion you came to? Do you remember? Maybe 10 years ago. Okay. And this is... seven was the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's your impression of coming to these reunions? Oh, heaven. It's absolute heaven. Truly. I slept the best sleep I've ever had, maybe in seven years. And here's Bob's partner, Ben. We're doing... I'm doing a little interview here. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying. And do you remember actually being in the Peace Corps? <laughs> I remember being in the Peace Corps. Okay. And um, what was that like? That was hard. Because I was sick almost all of the time. But it was fun. I taught at Colo. And it changed my life. I became a teacher after Colo. Okay. That's what I did. And I'm a banker. Instead of a banker. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I'm going to keep these interviews very short. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No. Okay. That's good. All right. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for doing thank them. Thank you. Though. Okay. What do you remember? I remember sand and flies and sun. And I remember um, adobe houses and people everywhere, beautiful, colorful fabric and uh, nice greetings and happiness and uh, Talk about the happiness. What, what happiness. about happiness in the, Asia? The, everybody seemed to be happy. The, um, the way they walk, the way they talk, the way they interacted with us um, at the at the Well Baby Clinic and at the market, even in the street. Every time you go by, <clears throat> everybody would holler and "Ina and all that, and dancing at night with a, a around a, a um, what were those? those lanterns, lanterns, and they dance around it and cast shadows on the walls. That was yeah. really... Did we bring those feelings back with us? Yes, I think we did, and I think it shows up here at this party. Yeah. It just, it's, every, it's very sweet, the feeling you get walking around with everybody here. That everyone is so happy to see each other and well, you very know, complimentary and just, you know... One of the questions I've asked everybody is, what do you think accounts for the camaraderie and the good feelings and the longevity of our being together as a family? Right. And several people have said it's you and Bob who account for a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Hmm, that's and, nice for them to say. Well, and it, yeah. but it, I think it's true because mm -hmm. without you, without this place, mm -hmm. we would not have had so many reunions and so many wonderful times. And, mm -hmm. So your place is a big component of us mm -hmm. after yeah. all these years. I mean, what do you, how do you react to that? <laughs> oh, well, we're, we're very thrilled and humbled to, um, to have this place and, and so many people appreciate it and enjoy being here. And that spurs us on to, to keep it going and to do it again and again and again. <laughs> But I think the feeling that we all have from Niger, you asked that question first, mm -hmm. I think it had to do with the time that we were in Niger in the mm -hmm. 60s. They were all happy. They had just gotten their independence. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that carried over to us because it was a really good time. We didn't have to worry about um, being invaded by Al-Qaeda or, or um, Boko Haram or any of that stuff. And, um, One of my strongest memories in Niger at the end Mm -hmm. was that I had not worried about a thing for two years. Yeah. And that was unusual in my life, and uh -huh. I think it was the only two-year period yeah. in my whole life where mm -hmm. I didn't worry. Mm -hmm. Well, that was very special also. We had the time, two years, to get to know ourselves and what made us tick. And, and, and I really appreciated that. I learned a lot about myself during those two years as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a good place to stop it unless you want to say something yeah. else. Thank you very much, Gail. <laughs> I know. I'm doing this in honor. Of you and Judy. Yeah. In honor of Judy. Yeah, sure. Well, so um, how many reunions can you remember coming to? I may have missed the first one. I think I've made them all since. You know, and I, my, my uh, memory starts with a loss of chronology, so I can't really remember how far back that goes. But I did go to one that Bob wasn't at, so I, and they probably went to the one that predated Bob. Fourth, yeah, I probably was at the, at the one just before that, the fifth one back. But, um,. Yeah, it's, it's sobering to see how many people we've lost, and it's great to see us, us survivors here, you know? It is. Who knows when the next one will be? I know. Who knows yeah, if we'll be at the next yeah, one? Right, exactly. But that's, it's good to be here now. So, um, do you remember being in Africa? 
<laughs> oh boy, do I ever, yeah. Reminded of it all the time. I'm communicating with a guy that runs a refugee camp in Uganda, and he's um, excited that I can still speak a few words of Hausa. So, um, but they're very few. I don't want to get him overexcited. What are those words? Give us a few. Uh, oh, Ina Kwana, good morning. And, okay. Uh, Ina Uni. Ina Uni, uh, yeah. And how's your evening? And um, Ina Gadi Watsatsu and Bashi Barantega. I mean, what is it with the little red horns on the black sweater if not to impress somebody? You know, so, you know that's, that's a proverb that you use all the time. It doesn't mean anything to me, but it always has an effect on the people. So I um, might as well keep using it. Especially since they know you don't have a clue what it means, it makes it even better. <laughs> so, uh, how would you su how would you sum up your whole life up to this point? Eclectic, extremely eclectic. You know, so everywhere you go, there's things branch off and change all the time. So it's just in a very eclectic life. Niger is eclectic himself, having to start off in in Dunga and in German country and switch over to Hausa and Normanducci and and um, you know, having to swim with the tide all the time. Very bizarre, so it's, it's, it's an eclectic place. Swim with the tide, that yeah, sums it up, huh? Yeah, swim with the tide, yeah. All right, I got you. Good, thank you. Okay. Keep it short. So, how do you like these reunions? You've been to a few, right? I've been to a good portion of the reunions once I found out about them. So, uh, I've come as often as I can, as often as they're held, and I always look forward to reconnecting and reuniting with people who are in Niger with me at the same time. It's a very special group. It is. What, what do you think makes it special? Uh, it was a, a time in our lives when we were all young and uh, not fully formed, and there we were in a, in a country under hardship conditions. Most, most of us didn't have transportation outside of the well diggers. We didn't have electricity, we didn't have running water, there were no paved roads. It was incredibly hot every single day, uh, flies during the day, mosquitoes at night, and yet there we were uh, trying to make a difference and growing up all at the same time. Did it change your life? I, I think it gave me a, a just a, a different worldview. Uh, one of the one of the things that one of the memory, memories that I cherish is I found I was able to make a connection with people who uh, couldn't read and write, had never been to school, and yet we could connect on a very human feeling level. Great. I'm going to cut this very brief. But is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I'm very happy to be here today. Thank you. We're happy to have you here. Thank you. Gary, how do you feel about these reunions? It's one of the wonderful things that one does in retirement is get together with a group of old friends. There is no group of old friends like this group of old friends. And Lord, are they old. <laughs> what do you think makes us special? The selection, the dedication to things. I'm speaking in truisms, I know, but really the friendship, the... Uh, reinforcement we give to one another would be among those sorts of things. What's your greatest memory of all all the times together? Uh, That's a terrible question, I know. I can think of any number of anecdotes, but finding out the wonderful things that people have done with their the, over their careers on this planet and how they've helped others. Excellent. Do you want to add anything else? I'm going to keep these short. Uh, I think other people are far more eloquent than I am. Oh, i put in a plug for Wordle. Anybody who doesn't do Wordle is missing something in life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I should have expressed that in five-letter words. <laughs> right, <It's> amigo. <laughs> that's truth. Is truth five truth. letters? Truth. It is. You're right. It, it yeah, that's, that's a good way to end. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. And you've just published a book. Richard? Yes, I published a book called Walking Home Again. It was about uh, my two years in the town of Agé and um, travel back 30 years later to visit my friends there. Lo and behold, many of them were still alive. Mm -hmm. And it was a wonderful visit. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. And, uh, and um, how about this group? How do you feel about this group? Well, I've lived pretty local. I've lived in Sonoma County. There was a lot. There were a lot of us here. So we developed a and we lived together, seven of us in mm -hmm. Occidental. 
until we started having kids. And then we all split up and had our kids, but we got together every Sunday playing volleyball uh, and potlucking. Um, and we accumulated other non-Peace Corps people who, you know, hanger honors who came and enjoyed the, the camaraderie. It's, it's like family. It's, our kids know each other, grew up together. In some cases, their kids are growing up together. Pretty amazing. There, you know, there are other Peace Corps groups I'm aware of that don't have this kind of camaraderie. What is it about the Niger groups? Well, I think one of the things must be the degree of hardship, you know, that mm -hmm. was there and what mm -hmm. we had to endure. And when we saw each other, it was really exciting and really special. And we used right. the time wisely and got to know each other. We sang together and. Okay drank together and cried together and complained, okay. complained. Yes, <laughs> I remember the complaining and the drinking. I don't remember the singing. <laughs> we I'm had, sure it was there. Yeah, we had uh, Dick Kranz and Jim Phillips and Oh, Mike, play, they played guitars and, yeah. And Mike DeMarco and right. Tom. Tom. Well, and Megan played a guitar too. So there was. There was singing. Uh -huh. And Rich would sing, can, what do you call it? A cappella? Uh, uh, well, yeah. Uh, he'd make up blues oh. on the on the spot. Rap. On the spot. Early rap. Early rap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to wrap this up now <laughs> on that note. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Bob. This is Wilbur. And, and how long have you been coming to these reunions? I've come to last uh, two or three at least. That's what, every five years, 15 years, 20 years. Yeah. And what do you think makes this group unique or special or good, good to be with? Well, we've all experienced some similarities about working in countries that are very different across cultures. And in our, in our situation, I think a lot of those cultures were a lot less... I mean, we're trying to improve whatever it was we went to work on. Uh, and, uh, and the other, yeah, so we have things in common that, you know, you don't have with other people. I think it, I was coming to somebody this morning, I think it's a lot like military guys that come home, they all get together because they've shared all those kinds of things, yes. and they kind of keep that for a long time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So in a sense, I think we share some of that even. Yeah. What do you remember about Niger? <laughs> I remember... Uh, seeing the pictures in training of Niger and you know how color photographs fade and thinking oh that's just the heat has all faded out they didn't take their film and as we were flying in to Niamey I said it really is an overexposed country <laughs> okay right all right that's a good way to end thank you oh, okay. <laughs> you don't listen don't listen to him <laughs> you know, I mean, it's hard to be serious. <laughs> okay, here's the first question. Do you remember being in Niger? Oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> uh, very much. I okay. Best time, what, one of the best times of my life. What, what, what do you remember about it? Connections with people. Okay. Living in a totally different culture, completely and adjusting to that and learning about the culture and the people and uh, overall you know finding out that there are so many similarities no matter where you live and who you're with okay you just answered my second question so we'll move on to the third question okay <laughs> what what did you come back with do you think in terms of philosophy emotion psyche I would say it was very, very expansive. It altered my perspective from being kind of small to just being open uh, to having a different view of things. A different, the way I looked at situations and people, I feel in a more expansive way. Well, the way you are today now, the who, uh, Norma, you are today. How did Norma develop from that time? Uh, along with the, big, the, the more expansive yes. perspective, yes. was open to uh, think in the newer ways. Yes. And I would say more openness okay. and taking risks. Uh, I think I became braver. 
Okay. Uh, taking rest. Okay. Yeah. And let's uh, let's come to the reunion. And what? How do you feel about these reunions? And how long have you been coming? Since they started, uh, I've been coming, and I think it's. I feel connected to every person from Niger that's at this reunion, mm -hmm. and certainly some of their spouses. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think it's just a very unique and incredible group of people. Mm -hmm. uh, big hearted, what makes... caring, and kind. Okay. All right. And do you have anything else you'd like to say? I'm grateful. Oh. Good. Nice ending. I did. Uh, yes, I do remember that now, Bob. And I'm carrying on without her. Wow, but that's tricky. That's tricky. I, I, I can't I do it you. very well. I believe you. But tell me, please, yeah. Connie, yes. what uh, your full name? My full name is Constance Rubiano, but my mom only called me Constance when she was upset. Okay. So I go by Connie Rubiano. Okay, I'll be careful not to say Constance. <laughs> <laughs> so. How long have you been coming to these reunions? What do you remember? Wow, I don't really, I don't know how long it's been because I come here because my husband Peter is in the Peace Corps. And so I don't know when they started in the 90s. Wait, I let's see, in the 80s, I think, right? I think so. I well, think I think it was then, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. But for, you know, whatever they have happened, I have come along. And what do you think? <laughs> And what do, how do you sense? How do you sense that this group is special in its own way? Well, I think that when they were young and joined the Peace Corps, the Peace Corps was young and the country was inspired by, you know, this hope uh, that young people could make a difference around, it, you know, in many places in the world. I, in fact, I come, and so there, the, and then the experience of doing what they did in Niger, I think, really bonded everyone mm. very strongly. And I just, I was just thinking the other day that it's similar. I mean, I wondered if like freedom fighters, you know, people who were freedom fighters in the 60s in the Civil War in the South, you know, must have, I wonder if they have reunions like this, you know, where they're bond, mm -hmm. that experience is so bonding, mm -hmm. you know? When I walked in today, I felt so happy, you know, it's been such a hard time, I think, for a lot of people the last couple of years. And it was just like the to come to Bob and Gail Reed, see, that's the other thing that's really special, I think, about these, is that they take place here in this amazing setting. And, and the hosts are just so unbelievably wonderful. Um, there was just a sense of happiness and joy when I got here. That's, and that's, I'm not even a Peace Corps person. That's you know? wonderful. That's yeah. good, good reflection. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just going to stop it there. Thank right. you so much. Yeah. Okay, we're here now with David Ikeda. Hello. Aloha. Aloha. No, it's mine. And tell me about your relationship with the reunions that you've been to. What do you think of them? Well, actually, it brings back many memories with a lot of people that we've had common experiences with it. And because of that, there's a fellowship. And, and I basically enjoy it. And amazingly, my wife enjoys it a lot also. Although she's never been to this year, she's bonded with a lot of people also. So we both enjoy it. And everybody enjoys having you here. And do you so remember being in Niger? In in so. Do I remember oh, being in Niger? Refresh. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? What was it like? Well, actually, I, always, I tell people I grew up in Niger, and I always feel as if I owe the country a lot because I lot of, made a lot of mistakes, yet they're very forgiving, made me to, allowed me to try and try what I learned and applied, and found a lot of them didn't work, and I went back and I badmouthed my prof because he didn't <laughs> train me correctly. But as I explained to Wilbur, um, I was trained for a different era. And it didn't work in Niger. Niger yeah. was back oh. uh, hundred some odd years, I guess. Okay. All right. I'm closing these off very quickly. Mm -hmm. What would anything you want to add? Um, well, basically, I enjoyed it, and I hope everybody else did too. I enjoyed the fellowship. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This is Gail, Emiga, and um, oh, from the other Gail. The uh, there's another Gail. Yes. 
And uh, how long have you been coming to these reunions? This is 11 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how do you think of this group? What, do you, what, what has it impressed you? I feel like they're family. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, what, is just, it, what is it about them that turns them into that? Oh, oh, what is it? I mean, I think it's because Guy was in Africa 55 years ago, uh -huh. is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and knows all these people from that long ago and you know there's just nothing like the passage of time for trust yeah. development you know yeah so um this is gonna be a very short interview is there anything else you'd like to add well just that you're the one who um, started us coming you and judy came to interview right. us yes <laughs> back yes. there i think that must have been 12 years ago and yeah, 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 2000, or, maybe even longer, maybe, maybe 14 or 15. Uh, yeah, 2006 or yeah, 7, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and then because of that, I mean, Guy had lost touch with Niger Peace Corps. So because of that, we came to the reunion, and then we just made such lifelong friends. I mean, I remember from that one, we had driven down 11 years ago. Right. And we, uh, we told Jack and Laurie Saunders we were driving back to Vancouver, and they said, well, why don't you stop at our place so we did and we stayed with them in Mount Shasta and we spent the evening telling each other our life stories and becoming you know best friends <laughs> and then uh, you know Peter said to Guy that if he ever wanted to go back to Africa he would go with him so when Guy got involved in the Lake Chad project yes. he and Peter went to Abuja and uh, then Peter said, he's such a good organizer, he said, why don't we get Connie and Gail to join us in London on the way home? And so we did that. So you didn't go to Abuja, no. you just went to London. Connie and I showed up in London <laughs> and okay. as they came back from Abuja. You were real, smart. Yeah, yeah, no, we were smart, yeah. <laughs> and had a fabulous time and then, you know, it just one thing after another and so and close friends. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you're Guy. I like that. I like Guy. I, I prefer Guy, but I will answer to Guy. Yeah. I don't care. He's a flexible guy. Yeah. You're flexible. You're not fussy. So, do you remember being in Niger? <laughs> Vividly. Uh huh. You want to tell me about it? Well, we ended up in the most remote place in the most remote country doing exotic things, and I will never forget. On Lake Chad. And that became part of you? It certainly did. And, and, and I, we still think of it frequently. And Peter and I worked together to a plan to resurrect Lake Chad. And I maintain a website on savelakechad.com. So we still try to do that. I get email a couple of times a month. Well, maybe once a month on, on this website. People see it and want to know more. So it's out there. Mm -hmm. And how does that connect with your life here now? Very little. Uh, it's something I've done and will continue to support. And uh, Lake Chad is, uh, you know, I've written some memoirs and I have the website and I have my memories. Uh, which are vivid but very personal. And what about this group? That You've come here now a number of times over the years. What keeps you coming back here? It's a delight to find a sympathetic community on this level. It's impossible for me to explain the Peace Corps to ordinary people in, Af in Canada where I live it's such an alien idea. I mean, it's not that there aren't Canadians in service mm -hmm. all around, but it's most people just don't get it. And it's very nice to be amongst people who do get it. Mm -hmm. Is there any more about that, this group that uh, <laughs> lights your fire? Well, very, very good people. That's all I can say. I'm sure there are many Peace Corps groups with very good people. Mm -hmm. And... We're just one. We happen to know each other. We train together. Some people work together in Africa. Some of us learned each other each other's exploits later. But it's it's been connected through Niger, and it's one way to be connected. Okay. And uh, I, Judy's kicking me in the butt right now, saying, 
Well, what do you? What does he want to say about Judy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have very fond memories of Judy. I wish Judy were with us now. She's she was a special person. She could put things on film, not film anymore, digitally. But she told a story. She was a tell storyteller, and that's what her great strength was. And so was Joan sitting over here, by the way. Uh, she, and, she and Judy made some terrific films. The one I, I love and uh, remember best is Northern Lights. Yeah. A fabulous yeah. movie. Yeah, that was. Well, she was a very big person. Mm -hmm. Very big person. She got around. She got around L.A. She got around the world. She got around New Jersey. She was a very big person. Murray. I remember my house. We had uh, we had an old dispensaire, and on one side we had an extension, and on the other side we had an extension. They were built in in straw, like with straw mats, outside the doors of this old uh, infirmary. So it had three doors. It had an entrance door and two side doors. So Mary Lou and I had each a side of this place. And we had our own, uh, what, what do you call them with the straw? What was the transition like coming back? Terrible. Mm, why was it terrible? We, I saw a lot of fat people in New Orleans when I first landed in the States. Mm -hmm. And it made me sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what about this group? I mean, we're moving right along. Uh, what is it about this group that keeps you coming back to reunions? Well, it's a group of friends. It's a group of friends, and we have something in common. We have to, we have same outlooks mostly, and it's stimulating. More stimulation with this group altogether than I might get in five years in San Diego. I think, yeah. unless, you know, I mean, just living ordinary life, unless I seek some kind of stimulation. Okay. I don't know if I'm explaining myself, no, but you this are. is just like a great drug. Mm. You know how some drugs... That's a good way to close out the interview. <laughs> this is a great drug. <laughs> All right. Would you like to add anything else? No, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Right. I've been coming here for, oh gosh, 36 years, I guess, be mostly because of my bride. <laughs> um, um, yeah, uh, who wrote a book about her um, <clears throat> Peace Corps adventures. But anyway. Uh, Say your whole name. Oh, Brian Gould is my name. And um, I, I, I always enjoy being here. I'm, I'm, I'm always kind of an appendage. I always feel kind of like a... But that gives you a good uh, observer. Well, role. maybe, yeah. And how, what do you observe? What have you observed in this group that makes it what it is? Well, kind of a dedication to the original idea that they had, you know, to, of, of of doing something for the earth mm. for, and for uh, other human beings. I think that's where the, the wellspring of of what we see in our, you know, in the people who get older and older, that doesn't die. They seem to uh, they seem to still have that uh, spirit of, uh, of positivity about, you know, things that, that, that can be good on the earth. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, very nice Funny, nuggets of be. wisdom. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, you're here. welcome. Minutes. Yeah, yeah, very short. Okay. And uh, you're talking about when you came back and you... When I came back to the States. From? Uh, from, uh, uh, actually, I had come from Colombia that, at that point. Okay. And it seemed that we had all come back at that point, and I had a job with, I called it the Traveling Medicine Show, which apparently Peter's dad was in, in, started it, I believe, something to do with it. So all these Peace Corps people were working there, and we'd all come back about the same time. And that's where I met Jan and Jim and ended up meeting Jerry and uh, who else? Just about. So anyway, that's how I met this crowd. and. They were very supportive because it's like I was telling the, telling that someone else who was like, are we normal today? You know, you come back and say, am I doing this right? You know, you're so uncomfortable. Jack, can we Pretty just transition right into your interview? <laughs> For what? what? Well, this is a documentary we're doing of this event and 
I've oh. done a lot of documentaries uh, with Judy Arola over the years. Of, I remember of, her, yeah. Yeah, well, we, we, we did films together, and in honor of her, I'm doing this again. And she's sitting right there in that empty chair. <laughs> so, but what, what brings you here, and how many times have you come? This is my first time. Okay, that's... You're unique then. Right? And it, it's thanks to Peter. Okay, Peter. You know, I got the invitation, but I didn't know how I was going to get here. I didn't know uh, where I would stay. Uh, I didn't know anything. And then Peter called me, no, he texted me with a picture of Mike DeMarco. Mm. Mm. You guys know. Yeah. And he, with Connie at a bar in Las Vegas. <laughs> and so I saw the picture. And I texted him back, and that's when he said, you've got to come to the, it'll probably be the last one, you've got to come. I will pick you up at the airport, you can come <laughs> stay with me, I will drive you up there. How could I refuse? Yeah, well what if it is the, the last one? You would have, this is your first and last. It might but. be. It's not going to be the last, is it, Bob? No. Depends on us. <laughs> it depends on us. All right. We could have, have ten people in a in a uh, restaurant. Go out to a restaurant. <laughs> All right. Would either of you like to say anything else for the camera? I just want to say that this house is the most amazing house I've ever seen. I've been today is my day to take pictures. Mm. I've been going around taking pictures of it. Yes. And I, I, I just adore it. I, you guys have been coming for a long time. It's a very special place. It is. Somebody even said they want their last vision on Earth in this life to be from here. Oh, that's <laughs> neat. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joan Musante. Okay. And uh, do you remember being in Niger? <laughs> yes, I remember it being in Niger. Okay, house. what do you remember? It is cool. I remember my cool. village. Typical I remember uh, the wonderful the people that I, the same, I met there. The, the school teachers, the postmaster, the, the head of the military, yeah. Ali. Yeah. Um, and of course, are my fellow um, Peace Corps volunteers and um, the lake, the lack of a lake. Um, and coming back to this country, what do you think you brought back with you, emotionally or and in the other way? I brought back a respect for people that are different from me, uh, a respect for third world countries. They're full of people, mm -hmm. just as good and honorable and smart and wonderful as people here. How do you think that fits into the group of people we are today? Um, I think we all have, we have this shared experience, and I think the ones that come and are involved in the group are ones that have similar experience. You know, we respect people, we like people, um, we like each other, and I think we have some good organizers. I mean, Bob and Gail, they volunteer this fabulous setting, so um, if we didn't have the setting, and Bob and Gail, and you and Norma, and few other organizers, I don't know if it would happen, but it does. Um, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, is. is there anything else you'd like to add? No. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much, John. <laughs> so, what brings you to this reunion? Oh, you know, the experience in Niger was uh, really important to me then and now. So it's really great to you know, be together with uh, a lot of people I shared that with. How does this experience blend with your experience in Niger? Well, you know, after 50 years, we still, uh, more than 50 actually, um, we ha still have a lot um, uh, to talk about and a kind of common base of some important experience when we were young, you know, that might have had some formative impact on us between then and now. So it's very cool to get together. Plus, it's just a good time. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a lot of fun. You know, people have remarked that this is a rather special group, like a family. And how do you look on that? Do you feel that yourself? 
Well, you know, it was a special time for me. I'm just speaking for myself. It was a special time. Um, you know, I really hadn't been too much. Uh, I haven't been hadn't been around the world at all before I went to Niger. You know, it wasn't that I wasn't a little worldly because I was interested in the world and the world events and all that stuff. I came from a family where, you know, that was a big deal. And, and you know, there was a globe in the middle of the co living room coffee table, etc. cetera. But um, it was just uh, such a formative time that, um, that uh, it, it, it has impacts now, which, um, you know, is, is, are, are, are really helpful. And, um, and fun to share with you. There are certain common values, I guess, that drive people to go to, uh, you know, uh, a very remote part of the world uh, that, um, you know, we've carried with uh, us. Uh, you know, they might have propelled us there. You know, in my case, you know, they sort of did, but also I, I you know, I really needed a change. And I, I, I knew just enough about myself to know that. So, um, but um, I think all of us in, in, in our ways, um, you know, had something that is fairly unusual that, um, that would lead us to a place where then we had these, these kinds of experiences that, that we've been talking about now right. over the last couple of minutes. So, yeah, so, yeah it's, it, they're, you know, I'll never forget them. They're very important. And I think other people feel the same way. Yeah. Thank you. Ed, do you, would you like to add anything else? I think that's okay, Bob. You know, I, I thank you very much. I, I know you, you like to be called Robert now, so forgive me. You know, I, I see, tend to default to, uh, you know, what... I'm wearing two name tags. Anyway, thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Peter. Oh, so many things, mostly the people, I would say. And being on Lake Chad, he made a raft, and we would go out on Lake Chad, and then we could swim in the middle. It was very nice. Oh, wow, without schistosomiasis. Yes, we hoped. Okay. <laughs> but you weren't real sure at the time. No, we were young. You know, it was a risk, friend. though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it sure was great. <laughs> okay, and when you came back, when you came back to this country, what values, what emotions, what philosophy came with you? Well, when I came back, I was horrified. I went into the Safeway, and I rem and I, it was just so huge, so much, it made me sick. And then I thought of how, and there's just another one down the corner. And then they have this storage room in back with all that stuff. And it just overwhelmed me, it made me sick. Mm. I wanted to go back. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but, but you ended up staying here and did what you came back with improve your life? Oh, definitely. Okay. Because I, I think I was very naive and narrow-minded being from Ohio. So it opened me up. Okay. Now this group that we're with on this weekend, how do you feel about us? Oh, I feel wonderful about us. I do, the, fr the first day, Friday, when I came, the first two hours, I was so impacted by how many people were here. Yes. And I was very sad. I wanted to go home. Yes. <laughs> but then now I'm okay. But it's a lot of people. Yeah, so many people. Like Judy is not here. Even though in spirit, I think she's still pestering me. what to do. <laughs> but what do you think is so special about this group? I don't know. I've thought about it before. I don't know. Mm, but there definitely is because I've talked to other people in the Peace Corps and they don't they didn't have reunions or stay in touch or have a group of people go to a certain area. I mean so many of us that came to the Bay Area and north have stayed. Yeah. It's just, it is amazing. Yes, and I like to think that it's Bob and Gail having this place, so that's a large part of it. But it started before them too, so there was something special from the beginning. It seems so. Maybe it was Judy. Maybe it was Judy. <laughs> but yes, there's definitely something. Okay. All right, this is toward the end of the interview. Is there anything else you'd like to say? 
to. No, I don't think so, except I'm very glad we had this. Okay. It's great to see everybody. Okay. Great for you to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bob. This is Kate DeLoss, who is married to Bruce Max Feldman, and um, he's still alive at 85, cranking away, um, and I am formally retired as a painting teacher, but I really want to tell a story about Jay's. Okay, here we go. So these are the first times that we're going out to Nguyen. We have, you know, been in Niamey, we've done all the preparatory stuff. And we're getting ready to get on this Land Rover, picked it up in Zandere. And Judy was accompanying us because she was in Difa and we were going to go to Ngigna. So she was there to kind of help us through because we didn't know what we were doing. But we were all on this old Land Rover. And there we were in the middle of nowhere desert. And the Land Rover dropped a transmission. It was a really big problem. We were out there with, we had some water, maybe we had a few little things to eat, but we didn't know what was going to happen. But I remember saying, neither Bruce and I were really scared, and Judy was very supportive at the time. And we said, well, this is, the Peace Corps said this was going to happen, so we weren't really concerned. But Judy kind of kept us going. We did, it kind of rained a little bit that night and we all slept under the, under the uh, well, land road. And then finally some, you know, a camel comes in the distance and a guy on a camel comes out to us and Judy was able to speak to him and that, uh, told told him what the problem was. Now, and so what happened was is, is that the this guy goes over to his village. About so four or five hours later, the he comes back with and then they a, out how to go ahead with a, a basket oh, full of rice with a lot of sand in it and some hard-boiled <laughs> eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so we had food to eat. I didn't know they ate eggs in, in Niger. And then, uh, then he goes, Judy convinced him that he needed to go to Difa to see if, uh, tell people where we were and give us what the story might be. And so he, he, the guy goes on the camel out to Difa and maybe the next day, in the middle of the day, Finally, Howard Posner and a couple other people came with a, another Land Rover and picked us up and took us back into Ngigna, or took us back to Difa and then ultimately to Ngigna. Okay. The, the chauffeur who had been with us, he had to stay with that, with that Jeep. You didn't leave your truck. He had to stay there with his transmission dropped on the floor. Mm. And so sometime later, Somebody came yeah. out and helped him repair that, and that was the story. Wow. But and without Judy, we wouldn't have made it. <laughs> <laughs> she was a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, she provided a lot helpful. of help for people. They're very good. So how about this group? What is it about this group? Gosh, it's, I think we, we had a very, very good training program. We had one of the great training programs, I think, in, in the French Virgin Islands. And I think the kind of training that we had, we were all camped together. We were all kind of there for three months, you know, doing our French, doing our stuff. And the other thing was is that we had, we had Newt and a couple of, remember Newton? I'm sure you do, Judy. Um, we had a few people who had been in Niger and who gave us really good cultural training. Mm -hmm. And I think it kind of helped to bond us, more or less. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about this group, too, is not my group, but uh, Wendy Wallen's group and the group that was before us. Right. They trained in San Francisco. At San yes, Francisco yes, I was in that group. So a lot of them stayed around San Francisco, around here. Yes. And so when we've gotten together in the past, it's because both groups kind of have gotten together. Yes. And I think, you know, if I look at Gail and Bob and Bruce and I, and there are a bunch of other of us who sort of are... Northern Californians, and we came back here. We all came back here. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. But Bob and was in my group, and Gail was in the next group. So they blended the two groups, and so that was a, a, um, you know, that fed off it's each other. We we built together. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Well, just a um, great, great time. Probably changed my life in such a dramatic way. Oh, you did for all of us. It changed our lives. You know, attitudinally and just what ultimately you end up doing. It was great training. Great, great training for life. Yes. I don't know if we did much for the Nigerians, but we tried. <laughs> well, I'm here to say I think we did, man, especially after the, the, the film that Judy and I put together. We went back and people did remember our contributions, so 
take a while. I mean, the wells and the health uh, programs and... Well, and we did tournays on a regular basis with for smallpox vaccination. Yes. We did, we'd go out and do tournays. Yes. And that was also... So I think we did, we did important work in terms of that, I think. Right. And I think we brought a lot of the values back with us that we developed while we were there. Yes. And we still spread them around. It's, you know. And we spread around certain things there. When we left, I remember they had told us to bring a pressure cooker to yeah. cook the food because we didn't have much gas. Yes. And so we had a pressure cooker. And I, I think with chagrin that I left this pressure cooker there and some poor Nigerian probably blew his heart oh. to pieces. <laughs> you need some instructions for that. All right, thank you very much, Kate. You're welcome. Joel Newberg. Hey, oh, that's good. You know it. <laughs> and I've, I've been trained. Yeah. Do you remember being in Niger? I do. Okay. I, I remember being in Niger. And, and, and what do you remember? Uh, I remember most uh, riding uh, tournees on horseback to uh, probably 12 uh, agricultural co-op villages. Okay. And a tournee is? A tournee is a tour uh, of different uh, locations. We had all these villages that were part of our uh, Co-op. Okay. And what, what what do you remember most about those tournees? I remember most that I, uh, in some ways, thought I had died and gone to heaven uh, because I could get up in the morning. Some guy would bring me my horse and a Bourgamia uh, sack with uh, millet in it. And uh, my job for the day was to ride my horse to a town. And when I got to the town, my job was to talk to people. Uh, John Warren Saunders III, uh, known often as Jack Saunders, uh, decided that I was the one for our region uh, to learn uh, to speak Hausa. So I hired a... Um, uh, 12-year-old kid, I paid him five cents an hour and 18 hours a day I studied Hausa. Uh, and in a short period of time, uh, the... Uh, you spoke fluently. The, well, the, the kid thought I was good enough to take out into public and he would walk me around the village of Geishame wow. as uh, his accomplishment. He had taught this white guy wow. to speak uh, Hausa. And I was the entertainment. He would bring me to these ladies and he would, uh, they would ask me questions and I would make answers, some of which were uh, not quite correct, but always uh, stimulated laughter. <laughs> Good. And what was uh, Sandy Leader's role? I said to him, Sandy Leader uh, knew what he was doing. Sandy Leader was the. Uh, uh, he was a uh, economics business major. Uh, he knew how everything worked, although he uh, he sort of vacillated between describing uh, things as this is just like Brooklyn or this is just like the Old Testament, and uh, and he found very very firm arguments for both of those. We go ready, and we based our our uh, development program on on the Old Testament and Somebody's the silence. Uh, an incredible privilege for myself and Karen to come here and see you and see how successful you've been and to see everybody in fairly good health <laughs> makes me think of the ones that have passed on and I'm not going to mention their names but I know who they are uh, and they were sharing these events with us for years and I haven't been here in some time but both you and Gail look in wonderful <laughs> condition <laughs> and your dog <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to thank you again for having this event it's always been special to me from the time I came back from the Peace Corps
But I've always enjoyed coming to these events. And I've always enjoyed seeing every one of you. And I've always enjoyed the various comments and observations and cynicism and smart, you know, uh, comments. So thank you so much again for having this, Robert and Gail. This has been a real... Rolling now, okay, and I'm going to ask: Do you remember being in Niger? Yes, I do. Although I hardly ever remember until I'm here at the Reeds, but and seeing everyone. But yeah, I remember. And so, what do you remember about Niger? I remember the sand and how difficult it was to learn to walk in the sand, and how I finally had calves. I actually got lovely calves because of Niger. Okay. Um, I remember really being fortunate that I lived with Jerry Collins, who was I got married to in this year. And my parents came, so we know it was a real wedding. And um, Jerry was fabulous because he made everything easy for me. For example, everyone said there were scorpions in our village, and I'm one of the few Peace Corps volunteers who never saw a scorpion, thanks to Jerry. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. Now. Um, what did you think you brought back from Niger? Emotionally, I, I brought back some sadness. I actually remember the day I left Niger, how very, very sad I was. I was sad because I couldn't be a Nigerian. I couldn't live in that village forever. Um, I also was in love with a little boy who had um, Ibrahim, who had sickle cell anemia, and I couldn't bring him. And I think I've regretted that for a long time because he died shortly after I got fat. Someone told me, I think the next volunteer told me. Um, but I brought back a, oh, I don't know. I, I mean, obviously it changed my life and it changes everyone's life. But much more of a sense of service than I've ever had before. My, when I first went to Niger, I just wanted to go to Africa. That had been my dream since I was a kid. For no particular reason except it was an adventure. But I think when I left, I got a sense of service. And I was in public health work, and when I came home, I stayed in public health for a while and then found that my real um, talent was for mental health work, and it's what I've done all my career. Mm. Now, yes. what about this group? How do you uh, feel about coming back to this reunion? <laughs> you know, Mary and Ed and I drove together. We're always reluctant to come, and we don't know why. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, I don't want to do that again. Yeah. I get here and it's like, oh yeah, this is one of my families. Right. I have a number of families, but this is a very deep, heart-connected, important one. And what do you think accounts for that? I think anytime doing something together that's difficult, that's purposeful, that mm -hmm. takes teamwork, a um, certain amount of intimacy, you know, struggle, I think Firefighters get the same sort of, okay. you know, I know guys in the service get the same kind of feeling, the, mm -hmm. the um, brotherhood, sisterhood, the, mm -hmm. um, and also people who want to join the Peace Corps and go to Africa and stick it out are pretty special. Yes, yeah. yes. I think, I wouldn't be surprised if most people you've interviewed have some sort of meaningful, well, a career that, that um, somehow serves the community or the nation or other people. I'm guessing that's true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, just that I went back to the Peace Corps in 1989 to Costa Rica and mm. I went back as a volunteer, but I should have gone back as staff uh, <laughs> because yeah. I was too much of a know-it-all. Yes, yes. <laughs> and you can't, you can't repeat it. Okay. You can't repeat it. Yeah. So, all right, great. Thank you so much. My name is Jacob Lieb, and I am a former Peace Corps volunteer, Niger, West Africa. Do you remember being in Niger? Oh, yes. I was um, the baby of my family, the youngest of three, and I wanted to get away and learn about the world. And what did you learn? I learned how... I could adapt to new cultures, and I learned uh, to, to be 
a problem solver, and all these things carried me, uh, carried, stayed with me for the rest of my life. Into your career? In my career, yes. I knew that I could come up with something in ca when there's a problem, come up with some kind of solution. Mm -hmm. What about coming here to these reunions? How often have you come? And I found them lovely because these are the people that I shared a, a common experience, and um, I'm not a big high school reunion person or college reunion person. These are the reunions that I enjoy the most. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, I, as I'm sure has been said before, this score was a defining moment in my life. It just gave me the confidence, uh, the uh, the um, ability to, to that I could adapt and um, and enjoy someone else's culture. And that's very good. All right, thank you, Jacob. You're welcome, sir. Leanne Bowers. Okay, and you're married to Wilbur. Yes. And you've been to a few of these reunions, right? Yes. And what keeps you coming back? Oh, I enjoy them. I enjoy the people. I enjoy talking about Niger. I was in Mexico when Will was in Niger, so I can relate to some of these things the people are talking to. Okay, what were you doing in Mexico? I was uh, in an uh, uh, orphanage working with a mission group, okay. and so we had a lot of the same dirt problems and same bathroom problems right. and same problems that a lot of these people out in the villages faced. And, okay. And so, uh, you know, I can relate to people and I just enjoy hearing yeah. all their stories. And How, how and, do you bring that into your your current life from the past? How do you think of the past uh, in, in your experience in Mexico today in well, California? Well, I think, well, uh, my experience in Mexico and also we went to Bangladesh. So my experience is over overseas uh, just make me much more aware of problems with people around me the homeless people and different people that uh, we encounter and and to be more empathetic with them and, mm -hmm. and to try to help more if we can and, and uh, things like that okay. and how do you what do you think is different about this group from other groups that you may that we all may know about well, I think people who've had overseas experience are more well-rounded. Uh, I think we understand some of the things of the world better. I mean, when I watch the news on television and they're talking about the Middle East, they're talking about Africa, they're talking about Asia, I understand that because I've been in some of those places mm -hmm. and also the migrants coming to the border. Mm -hmm. You know, I see those people as people really running to... around from from problems, not just someone who's trying to get in our country and take a job away from us. Right. So I, I emphasize more with them. And, and so uh, the people that come to these reunions exemplify that kind of acceptance and understanding. Right. I think so. Yeah. No. And it, like I say, even though I was in the chair, I understand yeah. a lot of what they talk about, sure. different experiences they've had. Yeah. And so I, I just, I really enjoy it. Okay. And uh, we're cutting this short. It's a very short interview. Is there anything else you'd like to say? No, I think that's good. All right. Thank you very much, Leon. <laughs> okay. What do you remember? Oh, too long to list. Okay. <laughs> well, give me a Wonderful few. people. Um... Uh, oh, some great parties. Um, <laughs> the Germans at Tucanus coming to take care of the flies. <laughs> Marching in with our gas masks and telling us to, to get out. <laughs> Close all the windows. Oh, that was, uh, that was something. <laughs> um... Oh, the Christmas party is in there. All right. I brought back a real appreciation of the diversity of humanity and the commonality of humanity. And an appreciation for different viewpoints of the world. Okay. Um, How did that play out in the rest of your life? 
Well, I always felt that I had to leave the United States and go to another country um, regularly to get a perspective. And if I didn't, I started to feel antsy. Um, because you can get too emulsed, enmeshed in your own culture. Or just to be in it. No, you don't see from other countries' eyes, but you see things organized, food, families, communities, in another fashion than they are a, a where you live. In t tiny matters, big matters, and it gives, so it just gives me a perspective to um, accept and honor differences in the likenesses. It's also like my father always said to me, every man puts his pants on one leg at a time. It's just the common humanity right. of us all. So how long have you been coming to the reunions? Oh. Uh, for a very long time. Right, forever. Uh, it seems like. Yeah. I mean, before reunions, there are volleyball games here. Volleyball games, I remember those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for a long time. Yeah. So, what do you think is the quality that uh, brings us all together? Uh, our acceptance of one another and our shared memories mm -hmm. and making new memories. Is there anything else you'd like to say? God bless us all. Oh, thank In you. Allah ya yarda. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And I'm really having flashbacks on all the people we're missing. You know? Yeah, yeah. Me too. Or not all of them, but that seems to be on. more of an emphasis than ever. I know. I was yeah. going to say, raise your hand if you're not here. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but. Well, uh, what, what, is about, what is it about this group that makes you feel good here? I think everybody cares about each other. Yeah. You know? And it's been a special group since the beginning. This guy went, the story is, is this guy went to Washington, D.C., and he sorted through the applicants, and he chose us. He chose us? He chose us. You know, I worked for Peace Corps after, afterwards in recruiting, and there are not any other groups that stick together like we do. Huh. I know. Are you there? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, maybe because so many people gravitated to the Bay Area. Bay Area. That's a big part of it. Yeah. And Bob and Gail having the place. Yeah. Yeah. And, and by marriage, too. <laughs> <laughs> Special by yeah, marriage. Yeah. No, uh, no, I'm not going to mention the red pickup truck, although you did just mention it, so... And you just mentioned it again. No, I won't mention not it again. I, I will ask you what happened to it, though. <laughs> I sold it. <laughs> the red truck, which we're not mentioning, I sold to the rag pickers. They, uh, old Dobbin to the rag pickers, and, and uh, they, they, you know... Did it, did they, they probably just... abused it and then and then um, sold it for glue. Oh, oh. Well, I will insert a photograph of the red pickup truck at this point uh, in, the, <laughs> in the documentary. Please, let's not talk about the red okay. pickup truck. Okay, no more. Now, uh, what I really want to get to is... Where's the camera on that thing? Oh, which, it's which somewhere in there. It? It's, it's got a, a well, lens. I'm looking wall-eyed trying to find where to look. <laughs> Over no. there. Okay. No, 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 no. I, I can Don't do that. Yeah, look I can that. do that. Okay. Let you can look please. anywhere you want. But uh, somewhere over here, over here is a, is a lens. So, um, do you remember being in Niger? <laughs> I do. And I what? Do. What do you remember? I remember being very alone, stuck out in the boonies. Mm. And uh, I was there by myself. They sent me there by myself to begin with. There had never been a program there. There was nothing... I was a volunteer inflicted on them just out of the blue. They had no place to put me. They put me in a kind of a, a hostile place. And the first thing I did wrong was in the in the shower, <laughs> which one never does. One goes out with we'll one's robes out on the edge of the town, sits in the field like everybody else does, and the donkeys come and clean it up. So I didn't know that. I'm going to have to Besides, do bleeps. Had, I'm going to have to do bleeps on those words, you know. Uh, uh, really, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and, then, and then, of course, 
Do you have, do you bleep Zhao? Because that's another one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to bleep anything. So. No, I didn't but, think so. But um, uh, one of the topics that I've been asking about everybody uh, issues is what about the camaraderie of this group over the years, over the decades? And how do you feel? What and what's your take on why we feel that way? Well, <clears throat> like soldiers, like a platoon mm -hmm. fellows okay. and things like that, we've been through something. Although it wasn't as dangerous as being in the war, it's still very formative. And, and you know, frankly, when we came back, we did not feel American. And so I can't. I remember coming back and at Berkeley, going back to Berkeley because I was going to pick up my degree. <coughs> After having spent a little time with my folks in San Diego, learning some of the carpentry skills that would later become my livelihood, but I came came back to Berkeley and I just gravitated towards the balls that were there, and you know, lo and behold, Gail and I hooked up really soon after that, and and you guys, I didn't marry you, but uh, you're you're a part of that, uh, kind of that uh, keeping this crazy American society at arm's length. Uh, so we don't have, don't have to reassimilate completely, because it was it was just so it seemed so foreign. Well, you know, one of the things I'd like ride. I'd like to present to you is this idea that um, you have you and Gail have contributed with this place so much to who we really are as a group. Without this place to come back to year after year to our reunions, I think we might have not come together so as often as sure. often or uh -huh. or maybe who knows but it would have trickled off and we wouldn't have done it so well it certainly hasn't you. happened for the other groups it hasn't happened for other easier groups yeah, it's true you know who are probably tighter than we were at the time yes uh, something something about uh, niger seven i guess really has got a lot of well then there's you guys you and and judy she she instigated the first one didn't she so maybe it was Niger 6 after all. But, well, uh, and, no, I was I know, in, we were in Niger 5. We were in 5. five we were 5? Okay, 5 yeah. and 6. So I was saying that Niger 6 was the one that uh, that instigated, but in fact, thinking about it more, it's Niger 5, and that's you and Judy, uh, period. <laughs> period. <laughs> yeah. Start, starting this, getting the ball rolling. Judy with her great skills at getting somebody else to do all the work. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm a fancy and, for that. And being in the, in the process. Well, but you know, I, I was so I was such an easy mark. I didn't even get bossed that much. <laughs> I just got set in motion. Okay. Again and again. Well, we really do appreciate that you did and that you keep doing this. And it's a wonderful thing. I know it's a lot of work for you. And Some. Because yeah. you guys spent a lot of time well, archiving and doing the photos, and I really appreciate that. And that okay. actually glues us together as much as anything. Well, it's, it's, yeah, there are a lot of factors, isn't it? I mean, now that you're bringing it up, there are a lot of reasons we stay together. But yeah. for some reason, we do it. Yeah, because we're so much fun. Yeah. And we have a, have a group of uh, partiers, and they haven't all killed themselves with alcohol yet. So, you know, <laughs> it's still good. It's still good. All right. Everybody's... Everybody really jolly, and tonight will be the even more jolly people. Well, thank you so much, Bob, and All this right. is the end of Over a very short out. interview. Over and out. Over and out. And uh, Wendy Wallen went to her station. She told me she met a guy that uh, I should keep my eye out for because he's what a Peace Corps volunteer should be. And, and that was Gary Steele. <laughs> she, she gave me a whole, a whole song and dance about your background. Uh, 2011, 2016, 2011. Remember the one we were pushed up on the brow? Yeah. How many we have? It was Gail and Bob who really, oh, yes. you know, enabled us Keep to do press. this yeah. and like continue to yeah, connect like, like this. It was okay. Really <laughs> important to keep the venue yeah. here. Hey, it's on uh, Amazon. Okay. <laughs> Just look for doggy swings. <laughs> no, no, you're just fine as you are. And uh, what do you remember about being in Niger? Well, I remember that I wasn't there, actually, because I just... I want to add something to mine. Oh, here she wants to horn in on Shelley's interview. <laughs> Go ahead.
<laughs> what do you want to add? I want to add Hajia, who is one of the most magnificent women um, that I've ever known. She was an illiterate midwife mm. who had been a trader. She'd done the Hajj three times. She was wow. incredible. That's it. That's it. Okay. That's Hasha. What was her name? Hajja. 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 Okay. Thank you. Now, Shelly, <laughs> we're back to you. Yes, sir. And how do you like? What What is it about this group that keeps you coming back? What What could What could be bad? I was no beggars, no liars, no thieves. Who goes into the Peace Corps? <laughs> <laughs> Good line. We're in. He's looking for, for Odessa, huh? <laughs> there she is, Bob. Hello. <laughs> oh. That looks great. Okay, now here's the. I'm in the picture. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's your title oh, page. Yeah. That's the title page. Wow. <laughs> so anyway, so what you end up is um, you saw our thing. You have you know, all your new things. And there's another um, the son of the. I told you. What's that? Founder for like a little bit. One eight hundred boo. <laughs> he found ways to control insects using of all things. He makes his own. Judy made the Okay, I know. Yeah.